Hey everyone, Phil Spencer. I wanted to take this moment just to uh, my best wishes out to everybody in our community. Hope you and your family are healthy and safe. We're all living in extraordinary times uh, right now and making the best of it. We're all in it together. Uh, and I'm really proud of the way that gaming is showing up to play such an important uh, part of so many people's lives right now. Uh, here we are with an inside Xbox show put together in a way that we've never done before. Uh, our production team, and thanks to all those people, are working remotely to put together uh, a great show for you. Um, our studios and our third party partners are also working remotely. Um, but it was really important for us to get an inside Xbox together because I think right now we could all use a little bit of entertainment uh, and see some of the stuff that's coming in games. So this is the best that we have right now. Uh, a lot of uncertainty in the world. You might see some scenes in the show, uh, but we thought it was an important thing for us to get out. So we wanted wanted to go do that. And we're really excited about it. We'll be right along with you watching it because uh, we just uh, love what we get to go do. So I really do uh, and hope you enjoy the show. Here you go. and welcome to a brand new episode of Inside Xbox. That's right, like so many of you, we are working from home. Myself, Katerina, Malik, and of course, Larry. I mean, we're not all working from the same home. We are practicing social distancing. This is gonna be pretty fun, right? Because you get to look inside our houses. I'm glad I did the tidying up earlier. But we've all got kind of different internet connections, but we are not gonna let spotty Wi-Fi get in the way of a great show for you. We've got tons of good stuff coming up. But let's start right now. Uh, with a game we announced at XO19, Obsidian's Grounded. And since the announce, we know that the fans have been looking forward to more information on the storyline and the single player. So let's dig in to all of that. Oh, good! You are not dead! I will be helping you out today. First things first, you're not supposed to be here. Secondly, you are very, 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 very small. Please refrain from panicking. Thirdly, the machine that could return you to your normal size is currently out of order. And everything in this backyard wants to, uh, eat you. Again, your tiny panic will accomplish nothing. You are going to need to find a way to survive out here. I would recommend building a base, maybe a simple shelter of some sort. Oh, and weapons. You'll probably need some weapons. But you should be fine. Unless you get eaten. You'll either be fine or you will be dead. It's really up to you. Oh, and you might come across some strange things while looking around. I'm not sure who put them here or what they want. What I do know is that they're watching. At Obsidian, we're really well known for creating awesome storylines. And with Grounded, we want to expand on how we tell stories. So I've always wanted to make a survival game. And one thing that we're doing with Grounded is playing a lot of survival games and looking at the genre as a whole to see where we can improve. First, we have environmental storytelling. So we want to tell the story through the places that you're visiting and do it through the, the artwork and the, the atmosphere of the, the areas that you're exploring. It's all handcrafted. 
We spend a lot of time talking about the tiny little details of why is this thing in the yard in the first place? Who put it here? Depending on the materials that the things are made out of, how they're placed, what's the purpose of this thing? We want to make all these details where it's actually a place that feels lived in and it feels alive. First things first, you're not supposed to be here. So in the trailer, you've heard a voice, and that's our our robot buddy, Burgle. Burgle is your buddy and your pal, and he guides you through the adventure, and he's also just the NPC that you can talk to if you get lost, if you need some help. You'll either be fine or you will be dead. It's really up to you. In the trailer, you notice that we do hint at that there's something else going on in the yard, and we do have a secrets and layers to discover. So there is some uh, uh, evil force in the yard, and you'll discover who they are and what they're up to throughout the story and the adventure. In Grounded, not only can you play in multiplayer, and it's a great multiplayer experience, but you can also play in single player. We want to support all different types of players. So if you want to be the, the player who crafts armor and armors up and goes through the, the adventure, you can do that. If you want to play a stealthy player, you can do that. If you want to just go destroy everything and build up an arsenal of weaponry, you can do that as well. What's really exciting to me is that this is just the start of the journey. So when we launch in game preview, the storyline's not gonna be finished. I have tons of ideas. I know the team has tons of ideas. I'm sure the community will have tons of ideas on how to make this game the best game that it can possibly be. So let us know how you feel about it, what, you, what you're jazzed about, and we'll work with you and work with the community to see where the storyline goes from here. All right, great stuff. And if you're hungry for more Grounded, the team will be on right after Inside Xbox with a gameplay live stream. So don't miss that. But first, for the rest of Inside Xbox, we've got a ton of good stuff for you. We've got five badass things you need to know about Gears Tactics. We've got a ton of great new additions to Xbox Game Pass for PC and for console. We've got the debut of Sea of Thieves April update, uh, and we've got exclusive first gameplay for the beautiful new adventure game, The Last Campfire and lots more as well. But right now, Larry's been checking in with a man whose beard is as big as his knowledge of Xbox Series X. Joining us today is Jason Ronald, who's the Director of Program Management for Xbox Series X. Jason, great to see you. Great to see you too, Larry. Now, we had a lot of news recently about Xbox Series X. Um, we talked about a lot of different things. Can you kind of go over quickly what they were? Sure. So it was an exciting time because we finally revealed the full technical specifications of the Xbox Series X and provided insight into some of the key innovations powering the next generation of gaming. Xbox Series X is our fastest, most powerful console ever, powered by our custom designed processor built in partnership with AMD, leveraging the latest RDNA 2 and Zen 2 architectures. And we really designed the system to deliver consistent, sustained performance never seen before in a game console. And we really designed it to have the optimal speed uh, balance of power and speed in console design. And it's ultimately about enabling transformative gaming experiences you've never seen before in the living room. Now we heard about things like ray tracing and variable rate shading. What does that mean for gamers? So ray tracing has always been the holy grail of computer graphics. Um, but we've never had the power to actually do it in real time. So we added a custom hardware to be able to do hardware accelerated DirectX ray tracing, which is really about delivering higher fidelity visuals, more immersive environments, things like better lighting, shadows, reflections off water and glass. And you can use the exact same techniques for 3D spatial audio so that you get a much more immersive experience. You mentioned variable rate shading. Variable rate shading is really about delivering new levels of performance and efficiency to developers so that they can go well beyond the raw power of the box itself uh, because they can be more precise about where they choose to spend uh, graphics power in different parts of the scene without reducing the overall visual quality. And then on the audio side, we developed a custom hardware audio block 
so that we could actually offload that work from the CPU. And that means that you're gonna get a much richer audio experience, but because we've offloaded it from the CPU, that means you're gonna have more complex AI, better animation, more denser, richer worlds. Then you look at something like Quick Resume. Quick Resume is actually built on top of the Xbox Velocity architecture, which actually just really allows players to jump in and jump out of experiences very quickly and pick up exactly where they left off. And, you know, as somebody who's been using this for the last couple months, it's really transformed how I actually play games. Uh, and it's just, it's such a great experience. And to be honest, it's really hard to go back and play games without using these new capabilities that the new hardware is enabling. All right, I've heard this thing called Xbox Velocity Architecture. What is that and, and what is it gonna mean to gamers? The Xbox Velocity Architecture is really defined by four major components. First is the custom designed NVMe SSD, uh, and it's gonna deliver levels of performance you've never seen in console gaming before. The next is we have a dedicated hardware decompression block so that we can take those assets and expand them so that developers have direct access to them uh, in real time so that you get much more dense worlds, richer textures, you know, more dynamic environments. The next thing is, is we actually have a new member of the DirectX family called Direct Storage, which is a brand new API that gives developers direct low level access to the NVMe controller. And then finally, we have a new feature called Sampler Feedback Streaming, which actually allows developers to on demand request data from the solid state storage drive. And that acts as a memory multiplier. So when you think about these large open world games like a Red Dead Redemption 2 or an Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we wanted the, the technology to fade into the background so that players just get that really rich, dynamic, immersive environment, unlike you what you've ever seen in previous generations. Jason, can you tell us a little bit more about the storage options available for Xbox Series X, including what this is? Sure, so so what you just held up was the one terabyte Seagate storage expansion card for Xbox Series X that we've developed in partnership with Seagate. And that matches the internal performance exactly. And it's all about sustained performance. So if a game takes full advantage of the Xbox Velocity architecture, that same game can live on the internal storage or can live on that external uh, expandable storage card and you'll get the exact same performance. But at the same time too, we know plenty of people have existing USB hard drives um, and we want to be, make it as easy as possible. So you can easily just take the existing external hard drive that you have, unplug it from your current console, plug it into your Xbox Series X, and all your games are instantly available to you. And you can continue to run all those games directly off that external drive. Um, so once again, we're really focused on giving as many options as possible because we know storage is critically important for gamers who have plenty of games that they love playing. Thanks, Jason. Now I want to be super clear about what Jason just said. You can always take your Xbox One games and play them directly off your external hard drive when connected to Xbox Series X. Now for Xbox Series X games, you can certainly store them on your external hard drive, but when you're ready to play them, you're going to want to move them to the internal SSD or the Seagate expansion drive right here. It's that simple. Anything else you'd like to share before I let you go? Honestly, uh, from the team, we're just really excited to get this out into players' hands uh, later this year. You know, we're gonna be delivering four generations of content, thousands of games will be available on day one. Uh, and we're really excited by what developers are doing right now to build new games for the Xbox Series X. So we're excited to ship it later this year. Jason Ronald, Director of Program Management for Xbox Series X, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Larry. Coming up in just a little bit, we're gonna give you the five things you need to know for Gears Tactics, which launches on April 28th. But first, it's time for the roundup, and there's a lot to cover. So I have my little tablet here, it's a little cheat sheet. All right, it's been a great time recently for Xbox Game Studios. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is out now and launched to near universal critical acclaim, cementing a franchise that fuses great Metroidvania design with breathtaking visuals and a music score that will stir all the feels. Ninja Theory's vibrant, competitive, team-based brawler Bleeding Edge also launch. I'm Team Buttercup, by the way. Complete with a colorful cast of characters, deep synergy across all the character abilities, and some of the most beautifully chaotic team battles you'll ever see. Pro tip, work together and learn that parry mechanic. Plus, State of Decay 2 Juggernaut Edition launched last month as well, including a massive free update with a brand new map, 
remastered graphics and audio, and hundreds of tweaks for longtime fans and newcomers. And of course, Ori, State of Decay 2, and Bleeding Edge are all available on Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. Now, we also have big news on the Apex Legends front. Respawn and EA announced a limited time old ways event starring everyone's favorite all father devotee, Bloodhound. I, Bluth Hunter, will slaughter. <laughs> this unique event puts a cooperative spin on the Apex recipe as you band together to defeat waves of prowlers. Included in the event are dozens of items, including 12 legendary skins. I might be just as excited about the announcement that the fan favorite duos mode is back permanently. Thank you, Respawn. Oh, and in true Apex Legends fashion, it's available right now. And now an update from our friends at Turn 10 with Forza Street. While the game has been playable on Windows 10 for some time now, we're happy to announce that the game will be coming to Android and iOS on May 5th. Forza Street is a new and unique Forza experience designed to be played anytime, anywhere, and excite anyone interested in building out their car collection while winning minutes long street races in Miami. Android users can now pre-register on both Google Play and the Samsung Galaxy stores so you know when the game goes live. And this is important because everyone who plays the game in the first 30 days will walk away with a 2017 Ford GT as a welcoming gift. Uh, by the way, that's in-game, not in real life. Uh, this is not gonna happen in real life. And to make your time indoors a little easier to pass, Gears 5 is free to play this week for Xbox Live Gold members on Xbox and Windows 10, and it's completely free to everyone on Steam. And while you're playing the game during the free period, you'll get another freebie, the Dave Batista skin and Batista Bomb finisher move, and man, I would hate to be on the receiving end of one of those. And by the way, that's just in the game, so if anyone shows up to your house and Batista bombs you, that has nothing to do with Xbox. And finally, as we look ahead, we can see Minecraft Dungeons on the horizon as it readies for its new release date of May 26th. This four-player co-op game, which offers both online and couch co-op, showcases the Minecraft world from a brand new perspective that is all action RPG while still quintessentially Minecraft. Don't take my word for it though, just take a look. In other Minecraft news, don't forget that the team has added a new education category to the Minecraft marketplace, including free education content. The educational content lets players explore the International Space Station through a partnership with NASA, learn to code with a robot, visit famous landmarks, find and build 3D fractals, learn what it's like to be a marine biologist, and so much more. All right, now on to one of my favorite parts of the show where we get to announce a bunch of great new games coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC and for console. Let's take a look. Coming soon to Xbox Game Pass for console. The satirical sci-fi space adventure Journey to the Savage Planet lands in the library on April 9th. Drop into an uncharted planet as a low-level new employee of Kindred Aerospace to explore, survive, laugh and uncover a beautiful, vibrant and wacky planet secrets. And coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC, if you're one of those people who knows all about the beautiful game from the comfort of your armchair, it's time to put your reputation on the line in Football Manager 2020, where every decision counts. Also coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC is the Watch Your Step or Die RPG Mistover. And the nostalgic romp through the upside down in Stranger Things 3 The Game. And coming to both Xbox Game Pass for console and PC, the immensely popular ragdoll physics meets platform puzzler Human Fall Flat is releasing DLC of a new level called Thermal. This frozen mountain environment will have you venturing from snowy peaks to underground caverns in search of gold. You can look forward to its release in the spring. And not only that, the Xbox Game Pass members will have access to the DLC on the day it launches. And coming from Kemco, the RPG specialists, Alvastia Chronicles. Join siblings Alan and Elmia as they avenge their parents' deaths and attempt to restore peace to Alvastia in heated turn-based battles with up to 13 party members. And we are 
pumped to debut the next chapter in the cult classic series, Yakuza. Yakuza Kiwami is an extreme remake of the game's first installment from 2005. It takes you back to where it all began when Kiryu Kazuma returns from a 10-year prison sentence, expelled from his family and alone in a world he no longer recognizes. And don't forget, the team recently added perks, which adds regular content drops for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. Right now, on both PC and console, and brand new to perks, you can get 5,000 My Team points and 30 skill boosts from NBA 2K20, an Xbox starter bundle with credits and more for Warframe, and a monthly bonus pack for Fantasy Star Online 2. Plus, for those who haven't grabbed them yet, you can still get an Ori-inspired hull, flag, sail, and figurehead in Sea of Thieves, a five god bundle pack in Smite, and three free tanks in World of Tanks. Perks indeed, and lots more to come regularly. Now to unlock all these, simply go to the member benefits section inside your Xbox Game Pass app. That's on mobile, PC, or Xbox One, and you can access your perks from anywhere. Today it's also great to be able to give a huge welcome to our friends from Japan and South Korea. Now from April 14th, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for PC and for console will be available for the very first time in Japan. For our friends in South Korea, from April 14th, Xbox Game Pass for PC will be included for free as part of your Ultimate membership or available for standalone purchase. So welcome. Oh, and it was great to see Journey to the Savage Planet being added to Xbox Game Pass. But I'm also delighted to announce that there's some brand new DLC coming to the game. Let's have a look. Hey, friendo. Just letting you know, I've got another mission request from Kindred. Hey, you may have bought this planet, but we put stuff on it. So now it's ours. Ignore him. But what are Viper doing here? See what else you can dig up. I'm sending an update to Kindred. Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, Gears. We are going to be checking in with Tyler Billman, Creative Director for Gears Tactics, which is coming out on PC on April 28th and then Xbox later this year. Welcome back, soldier. Now grab a weapon. Setting up a perimeter. I'm ready for him. Gears Tactics was developed by a small, passionate team of strategy game lovers. It's a single player campaign experience that broadens the Gears of War franchise. Here are five badass things that you should know about Gears Tactics. Okay, cupcakes, listen up. Gears Tactics was built from the ground up for the PC. While it is a turn-based game, we did a lot to make it fast-paced. We serve you a lot of enemies per encounter, and we give you a free action system. So you have three actions per unit that you can use to move, shoot, or apply your skills as you want. So there's a lot of things to shoot at. In Gears Tactics, the main character is Gabe Diaz. Gabe is a reluctant leader who's found himself in the motor pool due to circumstances beyond his control, and he's pressed back into service because of the emerging monstrous threat coming from underground. If the name sounds familiar, he is in fact Kate's dad, Kate being the main character from Gears 5. Just like we planned it. In Gears Tactics, Gabe is on the hunt for an evil locust named Ukon. 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 <laughs> Now, Ukon is a geneticist. He's the monster that makes monsters. The corpsers and brumox, the big bosses that you see in Gears of War, that's Ukon's handiwork. 
executions will keep you in the fight. Gears of War has always featured these incredible executions that you can do with the Lancer assault rifle or the Nasher shotgun, but in Gears Tactics, executions have a strategic value. How is that even possible? If you run forward and execute an enemy, it will actually grant bonus actions to the entire squad. This means you can keep moving forward and keep your momentum. In addition, everything in the game is earnable. There'll be no loot boxes, no microtransactions. What you see, you can earn. Gears Tactics is full of customization options. There are five different classes in the game, each with 30 or more skills, lots of combinations of things to find as you level up. Each class has a primary weapon. Each weapon has five mod slots, so you can improve the scopes or improve the barrels. All this together creates a bunch of combinations so you can try to win the way you want to win. In Gears Tactics, we also have a cosmetic customization system. Each soldier has three slots, the helmet slot, the torso slot, and the leg slot. Each can be uniquely configured, so different colors and patterns and metallic finishes. So if you want to go into the fight against Ukon with multicolored leopard print pants, you can totally do that. There you have it, five badass things about Gears Tactics. Gears Tactics went gold today. You can pre-order now to play on Steam or Windows 10, and it's included in Xbox Game Pass for PC. Watch for it on Xbox consoles later this year. Today, we're happy to announce that we are expanding xCloud to 11 new territories in Western Europe. If you're in any of the regions you see on the screen right now, head to xbox.com forward slash game streaming to register. And thanks to our friends at EA who are adding three new games to play in the Project xCloud preview today. First up is one of BioWare's finest, the epic fantasy role-playing game Dragon Age Inquisition. Next up is the return of Yarny in the beautiful side-scrolling platformer puzzler Unravel 2. And finally, Sims 4 joins the service as well, allowing fans to live their best virtual life on the go with Project xCloud. And now for a couple of indie darlings coming to Xbox very soon. And for one of them, I mean really soon. All right, so let's talk about Hell Games. They are best known for creating the procedurally generated infinite universe of No Man's Sky, which Xbox fans continue to enjoy. But inside this small UK-based studio is an even smaller team that has been working on a passion project, which is an altogether more handcrafted, intimate, and emotional game. Here's lead designer Steve Burgess to take us through for the first time, the first few minutes of gameplay for The Last Campfire. Hi hey everyone, I'm Steve Burgess, the designer on The Last Campfire and I'd like to show you an Xbox One exclusive of a couple of moments taken from the first minutes of the game. Our story begins in the dark, in a hopeless place, where a lost ember sleeps. 
This is really exciting for me, actually. We've been working on this game for a few years, and it's really nice to be able to show other people what we're working on. This is Ember, and somehow they've become lost. Ember ran without hesitation. The wall glistened in the light. The painting glowed, reacting to Ember's presence. It showed a moment from the first Ember story. Ember just hoped it would show the way home. What you're seeing now is the narrator. She follows you through the game and fills out some of the backstory as you're travelling and reacts to your actions. It was a relief to find someone else, though the stranger was deathly still. Hopefully you can see that the world looks quite charming, but you'll feel that there's a real undercurrent of darkness. That's what we're trying to get across. Ember froze, almost too frightened to look away, when they noticed a small satchel. I think this kind of charming dark fantasy is something you don't really see that often in games. I really love this moment with Ember. It's the first time Ember's seen a skeleton. Despite that, Ember's first thought is empathy. A little touch on the shoulder to say sorry and pay respect. The satchel felt heavy. Ember looked inside. Inside was a gold statue, moulded in the likeness of the first Ember. On the floor was the symbol of a campfire. We've taken a lot of different inspirations for making the game. Illustrate books and movies like The Dark Crystal or Labyrinth. Something about the door felt wrong. And we really want to tell a story that would fit in that style. And just like those stories, there's hints that as you play, this won't always be a happy tale. Moments like this are down to our artist, Chris Simons. He's our entire art team. Just one man has made all the art and animation that you can see. Ember departed, thinking only of the stranger, now left in the dark. He's put so many beautiful little touches and moments in, I think people really enjoy just taking in all the scenery as they're wandering around. The stairway led to an unfamiliar forest. If the stories of the first Ember were true, a path through the forest would lead to the campfire. Sometimes I'm playing a new build, and I'm used to seeing this white box layout and I've taken it back. He's transformed it completely with so much love. The flame called out to Ember. Ember tried to listen. So the cage you see ahead there is a place where hope has become trapped. The flame was almost within reach. We wanted the interactions to feel really tactile. You don't just press a button, you're pulling on a lever or tugging at the chain. The flame spoke and Ember listened. This tactile feel becomes a really important and big part of the game later on. Most games with puzzles tend to have a format of a series of increasingly difficult versions of the same puzzle. But for Campfire we were trying to make it so that each puzzle you encounter feels new or has a unique twist. It's almost like a smorgasbord of all different types of logic puzzles. Like here as you step out into the forest for the first time. It's a welcome relief to be outside, but then you kind of realise that this forest still might not be safe. And I think they're just understanding that this place they're trapped in is a dangerous one and they might never escape. Finding and rekindling hope is actually one of the big themes at the heart of the game. And learning to appreciate just how fragile that hope can be. As the forlorn ember awoke, the campfire flickered into life. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek. Coming up next, we will show you new Xbox Game Bar features. But first, we want to highlight some features that will help you take the most out of your Xbox One console. And if you're a parent, we want to ensure you feel comfortable with how much your kids are playing, as well as what kind of content they have access to. So here are five highlights of great features you have available now. First up is Copilot, which allows two different controllers to act as if they are one controller. This can help benefit newer players that are just getting comfortable playing games, players that require a unique configuration to play, or just to simply add a cooperative approach to any game. 
you can enable Copilot by heading to Settings, Ease of Access, and then Controller. Next up is Family Settings, which includes over 20 tools to help ensure parents and guardians are comfortable with how their Xbox One is set up. This includes screen time management, privacy settings, content restrictions, and much more. Simply go to Settings, Account, and then Family Settings to get started. Next, we have Looking for Group, which allows you to browse and create posts to find new players to play with. Let's say you need a fourth crewmate for Sea of Thieves. No problem. Simply head to the official club for the game and you can create or look at LFG posts right there under the multiplayer tab. Next up is gifting content like Xbox Digital Games and Xbox Game Pass. If you're feeling generous, you simply choose Buy as Gift when browsing the store and then send directly to either a gamer tag or someone's email address. And finally, don't forget you can play music in the background on Xbox One, even when playing a game. With supported apps like Pandora and Spotify, you can simply launch the app, choose the music you want to play, and then move on to anything else you'd like to do. You can then bring up the guide and control the music whenever you'd like. In just a moment, we're going to get an update on Sea of Thieves' new April update, but we have some great news for new features coming to Xbox Game Bar in Windows 10. We're partnering with Razer and XSplit to integrate features that PC gamers commonly use right into the overlay, which means you don't have to run those apps separately anymore, unless you want to. What does that mean for you? With XSplit integration, for example, you can control your stream right from the Xbox Game Bar, including starting and stopping your stream, interacting with chat, and checking out recent events and stats to help you with your viewer engagement. With Razer's Cortex integration, you can boost your gaming performance with the press of one button, which will end unnecessary processes and services running in the background to help free up resources on your PC. These are just a couple of examples of the Razer and XSplit integration. For all the details, be sure to head to Xbox Wire for more information. We'll continue building on these partnerships and expanding Xbox Game Bar's functionality in the months to come. Now, if you're interested in checking out these new features early, just head over to the Windows Insider program at insider.windows.com. We've been living the Be More Pirate life for over two years now. Can you believe that? Yeah, the team at Rare have poured all of their heart, their soul, their passion in it building out this great pirate adventure for us. But guess what? There's still so much more on the horizon. Sharpen your cutlass and get ready for battle with Sea of Thieves and our next monthly update, Ships of Fortune. The trading companies of the Sea of Thieves want you to join their cause by signing up to become an emissary. Working on their behalf will see you rewarded with exclusive cosmetics and help you to progress in the newly expanded reputation system. You can join any of the existing trading companies, as well as the newly established Reaper's Bones. This sinister lot are all about battle and bloodshed and would like nothing more than for you to burn the other emissaries to the ground. And in the arena, our explosive competitive mode We've overhauled your matches to make them even more action-packed. The old treasure maps are gone, now replaced by a single chest marked by a sea dog beacon. With only one cache in location, you'll have to battle hard to secure victory. And there's no time to waste either, with each contest now slashed from 24 to 15 minutes. Whether you're fighting for glory in the arena, or battling for loot and adventure, if you find yourself on the wrong end of a blunderbuss, your crew will now have a brief window to revive you and bring you back into the fight. And that's not all. Over in the Pirate Emporium, we've got fancy new emotes. A stunning Saberwolf-inspired ship set. And the introduction of cats. These furry felines will follow you on adventures across the seas. You know, except for when they're sleeping. Cats are like that. So get ready to choose your side in the next Sea of Thieves monthly update, 
Ships of Fortune. Hey everyone, Joni, Sea of Thieves executive producer here, and you join me from the slightly unusual um, kind of environment that is my back garden in a, in a beautiful English spring. First of all, really cool to just be able to show you the latest content update, Ships of Fortune. Really excited about how that's just going to just dynamically change the way the whole sandbox plays in Sea of Thieves. And we've recently celebrated our two-year anniversary for Sea of Thieves, which is an amazing milestone for us. It's been such a journey going on since the kind of 2018 launch and all the updates we've released and the amazing community that we've built. So thanks to everybody for, for coming on this adventure with us. And there's so much more to come. Uh, and recently, you may have heard also, we announced that we're coming to Steam. Really excited to bring Sea of Thieves to an audience. And it will be cross-play, so everyone's playing together in the same world. Really wanted to keep that community together and kind of break down barriers so, so everyone can play together. So super excited about that. And there's one final thing that I'm not supposed to be telling you. It's a big secret, uh, but really excited. No, to... no, 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 no. What do you mean? What do you mean? No. Oh, come on. Don't That's be a... No, 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 no. Typical Joe. But hey, great to know, as always, that there's some major things on the horizon for Sea of Thieves. Right, everyone. I am done for the day. Thank you so much for joining me from my home. It's been a pleasure. I hope you all stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll hand over to Larry to wrap things up. See ya. All right, that'll wrap it up for us here at Inside Xbox, but don't go away. Coming up next, we have an extended live look at Grounded from Obsidian Entertainment. Let's keep your eyes trained right here. Now, whether in the studio or we are home vigorously washing our hands, all of us at Inside Xbox wish you a happy and healthy days of great games and fun ahead. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.